My name is Daniel Shah. I'm a marketing student, but other than that, I am a hobbyist travel photographer. So I started my travel photography some three years back, and my first destination was automatically Pakistan because it was easy for me to travel, it was easy for me to speak the language, it was easy for me to have the same food, and it was easy for me to adjust. And more than that, I was a student and I didn't have much money. So it was easy for me to travel on my own. So I experienced Pakistan. I traveled to all the provinces, four official and two unofficial provinces. And I've seen a different Pakistan. And I realized how misinformed we are about our country, how misinformed we are about other provinces. People of the north, they do not have any idea about people of the south. And the people of South do not have any idea about East or West. And we have made our lives in boxes. And we have confined ourselves closed in those boxes. And we do not want to accept anything other than that we know. And we know that the things that we have is the only truth. But then I have, a, like, I have experienced a different Pakistan, a different people that I've never seen anywhere else. So I'm going to share those experiences not all of them, but a very few of them, so that to tell you what am I proud of. OK. So, so I'll talk about that I've seen the Ajrak making in Sindh, how they go through, how this artwork is being carried to us through centuries, through the civilization, and it's that old. And this is considered an amazing piece of artwork. A single Ajrak shawl goes through more than 10 different stages. That means more than 10 different days, just one Ajak shawl. Is it something that I should not be proud of that my country has? Then the pottery making in Sindh or in Multan, again, the handmade pottery, beautifully painted, and an amazing piece of art that we're exporting. And that is what we represent abroad. Then the truck art, who doesn't know the art on wheels? Who doesn't know that the beautiful buses in Karachi or the beautiful buses in Muzaffarabad? We don't know that these are the special piece of artwork. But this is recognized internationally. I've just came across a news that there's a tram in Australia that is named as a W Gara. W Gara is the one local bus in, in Karachi. And then that has been designed by the, all those uh, bus drivers in Australia. And that has all the funky poetry all the funky artwork, and that is considered an amazing piece of artwork. Other than that, this is not just confined to the trucks or buses, but I've seen some trisha in Balochistan. And again, when I was studying photography, my teacher would force me to see all those uh, trucks and buses. He would force me to travel in a bus and observe all those arts. And he says there's something beautiful symmetry in all that. I would not realize that at that time, but now I do. Then I've come across this young guy. He's an artist. He's uneducated, but he makes his living through the sand artwork. He, he earns his living at the Clifton Beach. He works every weekend. He makes wonders of the world through sand. And every weekend, his all work artwork is being washed away by the waves. And the, then he comes next weekend. Is it something that I should not, I should not be proud of? Thank you. Other than the artwork, like I've seen, I've experienced some unknown places that are existing in Pakistan. The cave city of Balochistan, that is just four hours drive from Karachi, and we don't know about it. I didn't know about it. I found it through Google. And then I went there, and I realized if this place would have been maybe in Turkey or Europe, it would have been a World Heritage Site. But do we know about it? No. Even the locals didn't know about it. They said that this is a bangla. Anyhow, we don't have any history written about that place. But this is a cave city. And then we have the Buddhist rocks spread it all over Pakhtunkhwa and all over Baltistan. That shows us how old we are and who we are. 
And then I've explored a very beautiful tombs that is in Deir Ismail Khan, close to Deir Ismail Khan, Lal Mara, that again shows an amazing piece of artwork who we are, 12th century old. And then Multan. I didn't know that the Multan is the oldest living city in the world. And I've been like going there many times, but I just got to know it. <laughs> then we have Mughal architecture. People are like going crazy about Mughal architecture, Taj Mahal, Batshahi Masjid, and all. And that is again an amazing piece of artwork that we have, we have in Pakistan. And it is also part of our history. This is uh, uh, Wazir Khan Masjid in Lahore, and then the Chata Masjid in uh, Karachi, and all. Then I've experienced the Kalash culture in Hindu Kush. We don't know that this is an ancient culture. They even don't know that they're Pakistanis, because they have been living here since centuries, living in the mountains. They, they might not call them Pakistanis, because they have seen a long history of themselves. And they're carrying their culture through centuries and centuries and centuries. But the sad thing is, the culture is diminishing. The numbers are reducing. But they still practice the religion. They still practice the festivals, like the Spring Festival celebrated in May. And then the amazing people of Pakistan, everywhere, not just in Islamabad or Karachi or Lahore, every single place. I would say amazing people because I was a student and I was traveling and I would not have enough money, but some people would accommodate me in their houses. They would give me food to eat. They would invite me to have a cup of tea with them. And I've never seen such hospitable people anywhere in the world. <laughs> yes, there would be people who would talk about, who would say, who would meet you nicely and they call themselves hospitable, but no. If you don't have money, if you don't have anything, and these people, if they can help you during your travels, they are real hospitable people. And they do not expect, expect anything from you at all. And then the amazing music and uh, the Sufi music, like in Bhitsha. And then I've come across some natural monuments that are not man-made, but this, the place like this, the lion's face, it's in Balochistan, close to Quetta, very easy to accessible, but we don't know about it. Imagine if you, if you make it a tourist place, how much revenue we would generate for that economy, for that local place, for that village, but we don't know about it. Even I didn't know about it, I was just walking by and spotted that, and I realized this is a lion's face. Then the Kashmir, the green lush valleys of Kashmir and the beautiful water streams. And then we have the Karakaram, Hindu Kush, and the Himalayas, the three biggest mountain ranges of the world. But we would go, we would want to go to the Switzerland or the Europe to just to see the mountains that are 3,000 meters high. But we don't know that we have more than 8,000 meters high mountains, like K2, And then this Shingrela, this picture has made me so crazy because I grew up seeing this picture in every calendar every year. And I've, I used to assume, where is this heaven? And since when I started to travel, I wanted to, to go to this place. And I asked my taxi driver, showing him a, a, an old postcard, that this is, can you take me to this place? And this was very close. And this is Pakistan. And I did not know that this is Pakistan, how beautiful it is. And then if I show this picture to anyone abroad, they would say it's Switzerland or it's somewhere else. But this is Pakistan. <laughs> then on the internet, on a blog, I would share simple stories of my happiness, simple stories of my travels, just like a 45-minute flight over Hindu Kush. I would fly from Islamabad, take a flight, and I would see the lush green Margalas, and then I would enter into the Hindu Kush, all, all over snow, and then I fly into a lush green valley, Chitral, in just 45 minutes. And the people would tell me they want to go to Nepal just to see, just to fly over Hindu Kush and see snow. But I did that in just 3,000 rupees. <laughs> 
and then the Clifton Beach. I know a lot of people in Pakistan, they don't know even that we have a sea. And if you go to Karachi and if you ask people, have you been to Sea View or Clifton Beach? They would say no sometimes. And people who would go, they would say it's not clean. But for me, it was beautiful because uh, I grew up in mountains, but then moving to a city, having a sea close to me was an amazing thing. And I would go every day to the beach just to see the sunset and just to see the amazing colors of nature. And not just the beach that is close to the city, but the, the whole coastal area that starts from Karachi and ends with Gawadar, it's an amazing place. And I think I'll die exploring more of Pakistan because it's too much for me. And then the most beautiful city that I've ever seen, Islamabad. <laughs> Thank you. I say that because I see civilization, develop people, develop city, plan work. But then again, for nature, I would go to Dominico and see the sunset and they take a picture. And that's all. So talking about all those experiences that I've ever made, I need to ask you something. Do I have a reason not to call me a proud Pakistani? Or I'm so proud to call myself a Pakistani. I'm so proud to talk about my, what my country has. And I'm so proud to travel on a green passport. Is there a reason that I should not be proud of? This is Pakistan for me, and this is home. Thank you.